anchoring. I want to talk about anchoring because this takes us to places that are so much fun and we can see so much wildlife and really enjoy being on the water. This picture here is of the Majestic Lines Glen Masson safely anchored in Tobermory Harbour. So with anchoring it's a good idea to have two anchors, a large main anchor that we use most of the time and a smaller anchor which we call a kedge anchor which we can use for emergencies. Um, it can increase the holding of our main anchor, it can reduce the swinging circle in a crowded anchorage and if we just don't want to use the main anchor, so if we're racing we want to kedge, wait for the uh, the wind to pick up, if the tide's against us, we can use our kedge anchor. Yep, weight does matter. It's better to have an oversized anchor than an undersized anchor and we can work out and look up the recommendation of the size of anchor for our boat. But there's nothing worse than being in anchorage with the anchor starts dragging at three in the morning in the driving rain and we have to pull it up and get out of the anchorage. So yep, yeah, it's better to have an oversized anchor. There's lots of different types of anchors. I'm gonna go through them. Um, most of the time when I've been on a boat, I haven't had the choice of anchor. Um, and you have to use the anchor that's given to you with the boat. So I'll go through the anchors, we'll go through the uh, pros and cons, um, and we'll have a look at them. First is the typical anchor that um, we all know the sign from, a draw, drawn um, to a child's diagram. It's called a fisherman's anchor. Um, it cuts through, it's great for um, rocks and weed because it cuts through, but the surface area it presents the bottom is quite small, so its holding capacity is quite small. So traditional style, good holding in rocky and weedy bottoms. It stows flat and it only has one moving part. As I said before, the bad features are poor power to weight, poor holding in sand and mud because it just slips through and the flutes can fail on the chain as it goes down or up. Plow anchor, called this because it looks like a plow, also known as a CQR anchor. Good features, good power to weight holding ratio, good holding in sand and mud. Um, it's made out of steel, it's very strong. Bad features, it's poor holding on rocky or weedy bottoms. So on the rock, it just slides across the rock. On weed, the weed all collects on it and it's just a big weed ball sliding across the bottom. It's awkward to stow. Um, you stow it on the front of the boat. Uh, the moving parts can trap your fingers. And if it's a hard um, bottom we're trying to anchor in, it can sometimes flip or capsize. Um, and that's showing it capsizing on a, on a hard bottom and it will slide and it will stow on the front of the boat in a bow roller. A fluke anchor, um, moving part, really good holding. Um, as it pulls along, the fluke comes down and it holds in the bottom. Good features, good holding in soft sand mud and it stows flat. Bad features, it can be hard to get out of the mud. Not good on rock, again it will slide across. Moving parts can trap fingers. It can capsize if the boat swings um, and it won't. It's not happy to reset after that. A claw anchor or a bruise anchor, um, designed for the North, North Sea oil rigs. Um, good features, um, great, good power to weight holding, good holding in sand and mud, no moving parts to trap fingers, easy to break out. Bad features, because it doesn't fold, it's awkward to stow. Um, we keep it on the uh, bow roller on the front, poor holding if the bottom is not sand or mud. It can capsize, but the fluke still holds on and it will still hold if it's capsized and it will stow on the front of the boat in the bow roller. Delta anchor, plow style, it's a development on from the plow or CQR. Um, excellent power to weight ratio, good holding sand and mud, no moving parts to trap fingers, digs deep, holds fast. Uh, bad features, awkward to stow, stow it on the bow roller, it can capsize on hard bot bottoms but less likely than the CQR. Um, digs deep, holds fast, stows on the bow again on the front of the boat. Um, newer anchors come in the market and these have the bow across the top, Manson's one of them and it stops it capsizing and if it does flip it resets. So good features, good power. Um, to weight holding, good holding in a wide range of bottoms, no moving parts or trap fingers, doesn't capsize, easily breaks out. Bad features, awkward to stow, and that's why we keep it on the front of the boat on bow rollers, but it won't capsize the bar at the top, stop it capsizing or flipping over. Um, very good power to weight holding ratio. And here's a comparison of the anchors. So if you want to read this, just pause and have a look at this. Um, on smaller boats, um, for tenders, dinghies, um, safety boats, we use these in our safety boats, are called grapnel, and it's a claw, and the claws all tuck in, undo the uh, the round part on the shaft, flips out, tighten it up, and we can put it over the side. Um, 
good features, easily folded. You can get it away in a small space, good on weed and shallow waters. Um, it's useful for small craft and dinghies. Bad features, poor power to weight, uh, moving parts can trap the fingers. Stowage and handling. So the stow and bow rollers, if we're racing, we're not allowed to stick the, uh, the anchors on the front because if we do have a collision, um, it does a lot of damage to the other boat with the anchor on the front to have to take it off. But if it is on the front on my cruising boat, it's easier to pull in, it's easier to put over, and it's easier to clean. Um, most boats on the bow will have an anchor locker. If you are taking the anchor in, it comes in, and you can put the anchor in the uh, locker, so you can stow the chain and the line, and then the anchor on top. Um, some boats have an anchor winch, winch, either manual or electric, or you may have to pull it up by hand. So, how much chain or chain rope do you use, or do you need? So some anchors have, some boats have all chain and some boats will have chain and rope. So if it's all chain, um, we will need less. If it's chain and rope, um, we need more to put in the water. So the rough rule of thumb, um, and this is what they're asking in the questions, if it is chain only, we're looking for four times the maximum depth of water. Chain and rope, six times the maximum depth of water. And when we say the maximum depth, we mean the depth when you're at the anchorage at high tide. So if you're at low tide and it comes up another two meters, we'll take the height of the water at high tide, multiply it by four for chain only, multiply it by six for chain and rope. So anchors work, um, a horizontal pull from the boat and it digs the anchor in. If that isn't horizontal and the chain comes up, the anchor will come out. And that's how, when we finished anchoring, we pull the anchor out. So you need to know how much chain or rope that you have on your boat. You need to check the depth of water you're in and whether the tide's going up or down. If it's going up, you need to allow for that. Um, not too little at high water, because we've allowed for that. If in doubt, let more cable out. So if there's room um, in your anchorage, your anchor chain and rope, it's no use in the anchor locker. It's much more use on the seabed. So the more you put out, the more it's the chain is horizontal by your anchor and holding it in. So choosing an anchorage. This is the fun part. I love this. Studying over the charts, the best place to go for an anchorage and to go an anchor. Um, so most anchorages are free. There's a few around the country that you get charged for. You can anchor anywhere except places you're told you can't anchor. I know that sounds a bit daft, but if there's a cable cable underneath the seabed, you don't want to anchor there. Uh, if there's a... Um, if there's an ancient wreck there, you're not allowed to anchor there. So study the charts in the pilot books and it'll tell you where you can't anchor. So, rules of anchoring. We want shelter from the wind and tide and swell. We want to be out of shipping lanes. Um, any problems on the chart, we want to avoid anchoring there. We need enough s scope, and that's swinging circles for me. Anchor to you as a circle, and as the tide and the wind change, we could be anywhere in that circle. Um, so we need enough space in that swinging circle so we don't hit any other boats or the shore or any rocks. And regularly check your position with a transit, um, especially at the tur turn of tide or wind change. And we'll talk about checking your position in a minute. So shelter from the wind, tide and swell. Ideally, the wind should be blowing out of the anchorage. Um, check the forecast of weather to see whether the anchorage is still offer protection if the wind changes. Any slight chance of bad weather, plan an escape route. Also take into account of leave the anchorage by day and night. So if you go into an anchorage and you have to weave through a load of rocks and then anchor, if you have to leave the anchorage, you're going to have to weave through those same rocks again, maybe in horizontal rain, high winds and pitch blackness. So really carefully um, check the weather forecast for your duration on that anchorage. So choosing the right anchorage. So we've got the present wind and the forecasted wind. So in anchorage one, initially this anchorage provided an adequate shelter from the present wind direction, although may be prone to swell coming around the headland, but provide no protection from the forecasted wind. So be okay for a lunch spot now, but not okay for an overnighter. Um, location two in this bay, it will offer shelter from the present wind and forecasted wind, maybe swell from the sea rebounding around the um, downwind cliff when the wind changes. Um, if there's some rocks in the bay and you're tucked inside those rocks, 
it may be difficult to leave if you have to leave during the night. Anchorage 3, it's open, offers good protection from both wind directions now and later and there's no rocks and there's nothing stopping you coming straight away from the bay back out to sea if required. So of those three anchorages, number three is probably the best one if you want to stay the night. Um, add a strong tidal stream or a swell. So on the left, this is an isolated danger mark. This is actually a um, water turbine based in Stranford Lock in Northern Ireland. Um, in this channel in Stranford Narrows, the tide runs very fast and it's rocky and it's weedy and it's not a good place to anchor. On the right, we've got Lulworth Cove. So if we look out at sea, it looks really calm, but we've got the residue of a swell coming in and by the shape of the bay, it amplifies that swell. So being anchored in Lowell Cove for those conditions, um, it would end up quite an uncomfortable anchorage. So look at the chart, any known problems displayed, make sure you have a good look. Um, the chart, the pilot book, so you've got historic wreck there, explosive dump, dumping ground. Um, hashtag, hashtag on a chart, means that there's um, spoil on the bottom. So people have chucked stuff over the side, could be fishing nets, could be cables. Um, you don't want to anchor there because it's really easy to get the anchor caught up. A sign with an anchor with a cross cross um, in, we can't anchor there. Uh, squiggly lines would be a cable, oil pipelines, gas pipelines, and an area where we can't anchorage um, with the anchor symbol with the cross in at the bottom. So these are areas that we can't anchor. So know your chart symbols. So we've got the anchorage and the prohibited anchorage on the left. On the right, if we look at the chart carefully, we'll see symbols on the chart, which will show us the condition of the seabed. So a big M stands for mud, CY clay, SOS, soft sand. So we know what the seabed is like. So R will be rock on what would give good holding and not give good holding. Um, out of the channel, used by ships and other boats. That's pretty obvious. You don't want to be run over by a ship. And you need to drop enough chain, we said before, four times for chain, six times for chain and rope. But from where you drop the anchor to where the anchor comes tight becomes the radius of your circle. So you could be anywhere in that circle. So you need enough scope to be aware of your swinging circle and where this will take you. Um, and also if the tide turns or the wind changes, you will move on that swinging circle. So observe how now how other vessels are lying and assess the conditions of the wind and tide, decide how you will lay when the wind and tide changes. So different boats swing at different rates. So if we come up to an anchorage and there's a lightweight motorboat and we're a heavier yacht, um, we will settle more with the tide and the motorboat will settle more with the wind. So before the tide changes um, and a tide will change, there is a chance that we could hit each other if our swinging circles are within each other. So check that when you go and anchor. <clears throat> also, when the tide goes down, there's less depth, so our swinging circle um, becomes bigger. So dropping the anchor. So you need to prepare beforehand to drop the anchor. Um, decide where you're gonna go, decide how you're gonna do it. And if you have an anchor alarm, it's a good idea to set the alarm, anchor alarm as you drop the anchor. So drop the same amount of chain as to the depth you're in at the time, and that'll put the anchor on the bottom, and then motor or drift backwards slowly and pay out the chain to go on a long line in the seabed. You don't wanna drop the whole lot in one go because you get a big mess of chain on the bottom, it could all tangle up. So prepare yourself beforehand, be ready. As soon as you drop, hit the anchor alarm, and that will set the anchor alarm from where the anchor is on the bottom, not from the edge of your circle. So drop the anchor. Um, you need to brief the crew because you'll be the back of the boat um, and the crew will be by the anchor. So explain how you want it to be done, what you want to do. Um, you may decide beforehand either to have a radio or hand signals, but make sure you and your crew know what you're doing beforehand. Um, so if you have a winch or windlass, Make sure it's switched on and it's working and the crew know how to use it. If you're not using one, here we are. We laid out the chain on the deck, lay out enough chain for your depth. So when you undo the anchor, flip it over the side, that amount of chain will go over, it's tied up on the cleat, and then you pay out or let out the chain as you go backwards. So we've laid out our anchor. 
we're at the edge of our swing circle, we want to know if the anchor's working or it's dragging. So we've dropped the anchor, gone back. If we look at a shore, the sideways towards us, in this diagram we have a house and a tree. So if we line up the house and the tree, and we then just put the engine in reverse uh, to simulate the wind blowing us, the chain will go tight. So when the chain goes tight, have a look at the GPS speed. That should go down to zero. Have a look at, at a transit sideways to you, to a tree and the house. If that stays the same with your engine in reverse for about 20 seconds, then your anchor's holding. If the tree's moving relative to the house, your anchor is dragging. The person at the front will be looking at the chain. If it's bar tight, if it's tight, the anchor's holding. If it's making a grumbling noise and it goes tight, then it goes loose and it goes tight, it's dragging. And on those occasions, you may just have to pull the anchor back up and reset it again, do the whole process again. So we said anchor alarm, set the anchor alarm as the anchor drops. We need to practice this because it takes a little bit of practice to get it at the same time. So a lot's happening when you drop the anchor. Have a look at the depth. Um, and when we're anchored, set the maximum alarms and the minimum alarms. Obviously minimum alarms we go towards the shore, but most anchorages would going, if it drifts, it would drift out to sea. So if we set a maximum alarm, the alarm will go off when the depth goes to that, that depth that you've set. If we have radar, we can set a radar alarm. Um, disadvantage radar alarm is if any boat motors within your um, area that you've set your radar alarm, your radar alarm go off. I've had them go off with seagulls going through radar alarm. Also on a yacht, you're not going to have the power resource um, to have a radar running full time during the night. So check the anchor's holding. Check the anchor at the change of tide and at nightfall. And pick new transits before you go to bed. When you go to bed, your transits could be lights. So you need to check those. Um, check if the wind increases. You may need to let out more cable to relieve the load on the anchor. Um, to keep the pull on the anchor as near as horizontal. If you let out more cable, you're going to have to do new um, new transits. And if you're unsure, it's a good idea to set up an anchor watch. So one or two people are up on a watch system on a rotor during the night and they know uh, what to check for, for the dragging of the anchor with the depth and the anchor um, drag alarm, what to do to wake you up. So how do you show your anchor? Well, there's some light shapes that we need to show. So during the day on the left, it's a ball that's put up. Um, it's hoisted up so it's visible for 360 degrees around. Um, during the night, it's an all round white light so its visibility is 360 degrees. So there's the anchor ball during the day. Uh, it could be stretched flat fabric, it could be inflatable, it could be circle slotted together. If you're a traditional boat like a barge, they quite often use a car tire and it's hoisted at the bow at the front of the boat. And there it is at the front of the boat, visible 360 degrees. At night, Either they have a built one built in, an all round white light built in at the top of the mast, or you have one up the force day, but it's all round white light visible for 360 degrees. So the other use for an anchor, um, if your engine fails when you're coming out of a harbour, if you've got an anchor ready, it's great. You can put the anchor over the side. I call it the handbrake of the sea. So if anything goes wrong, you put your handbrake on, um, anchor, then you can sort yourselves out. So before you leave the harbour, um, make sure the anchor is ready to go. So that may mean taking the pins out, making sure the windlass works, um, maybe even make it have some chain on the deck. So if the engine stops, you can immediately use your anchor. So it's the handbrake of the sea. Putting the anchor up. So you see people straining and pulling on an anchor. We shouldn't be doing that. We have an engine for that. So stand at the front, point to where the chain is, so the uh, helms person can see where the chain is, um, and they motor towards the chain. So at the front, you should only be pulling up slack chain until the chain is vertical. It may just break out, and you can pull it up. It may not break out. If it doesn't break out, tie it up on the windlass or tie it up on the cleat, and on the right-hand diagram there, motor 
in the wrong direction of the anchor. So if you motor in the wrong direction of the anchor, it's called breaking out the anchor. It will pop out and then you can ease on the power and pull the anchor up. So use the engine. We shouldn't be pulling and heaving on the anchor chain. That's what the engine's for. So raising the anchor, once we've got the anchor up, stay in sheltered water because you're crew on, on the deck and they're working on the deck with the chain put away. If the anchor's muddy, wash off the bottom of the anchor, so a bucket and water and a brush. So clean it as, as well as you can before you put it away because you don't want any mud um, in your anchor locker. Also, you don't want to carry any evasive aquatic species from one area to another area. So thoroughly clean your anchor before you put it away. So before you leave your mooring or your anchorage, um, this is standard practice. Um, check your safety equipment, brief the, queue, get the crew on the use of the safety equipment, where it is, how to use it, who's going to use it. Switch on the battery, check on your instruments, check the navigation lights work, check your engine oil, fuel level, gas, water, check the radio, shut airtight hatches. Um, and like Every time you go, you do your pre-sailing pre checks. So as I say, close the hatches, stow the gear, radar reflector in place if needed, sail covers off, sails ready to hoist, so if anything goes wrong you can sail away. Um, waterfall, pre-prepare food, hot drinks, put rubbish ashore, prepare anchor ready for use. Um, not necessary if you're putting up the anchor, check crew suitable clothing, prepare hot drinks and food. It's always also a good idea to have a briefing with the food, briefing with the crew with a chart explaining where you're going, what you're doing, how long it's going to take and the appropriate clothing for the passage. Always makes for a happier crew if they know what's going on. Wanted to finish with this because this is and one of my favourite anchorages. This is in Scotland, a place called Loch Dramabui. This is about five o'clock in the morning before heading off to St Kilda with the sun coming up over Arden American. Um, this anchorage, you go through a tiny entrance and it is just a lock by itself. I love it because we anchor in the middle, whichever direction the wind blows, the anchor will hold because the anchor has to go uphill. And this was on this boat, the Glen Masson. Um, we only go alongside once a week to take on stores and to transfer passengers. The rest of the week in the west coast of the Scotland, every single night, we're at Anchorage. And we can go to some of the most amazing places. So the great advantage of anchoring is we can go to fantastic places and see things that you just cannot see in marinas, such as wildlife, um, otters, all sorts of things, eagles, um, that you just cannot see from a marina. So the joys of anchoring are immense. Just a few things to pick up. Um, we have a look at the video, go through it a few times. Um, anchoring is a joy. Thanks very much for listening. It's Paul, City Sailing. Talk to you later. Cheers. Bye.